Hello everyone, I'm Cindy Young, Director of Brownfield. We recently hosted events featuring Farber Panels at six locations throughout the Midwest. The only request we made to the farmers in advance was that they be honest when answering their questions. For the next few weeks, we'll be digging into different ways that farmers are using media for their operations. Here's our first segment, Farmers Using Digital. Enjoy. How often do you read or click on digital ads and what would compel you to click on a digital ad? And, and Eric, I'll start with you. It has to be catching, you know, if, it, if it's like a news article on Facebook or Twitter or something. It has to catch my attention in the headline, usually, or otherwise I'll just scroll past it. Um, pictures are, are a big thing, you know, it's got to be a visually appealing thing as well. When was the last time you heard a commercial in ag radio or outside that made you think, I got to try that product related to your business? Quite often. You know, that, that you brings up a, a very good point because I, I'll, I'll remember the name or something and then I'll go home and do some research on it. I will, uh, you know, either in my smartphone and write it down or uh, try to remember. Believe it or not, I do have pencil and paper in, in, a, in some of our vehicles that I write it, actually write it down and then do some research on it. Yeah, if something's of interest, uh, depending on what I'm doing, if I got auto steer on where I can lock that on, I'll grab my iPad and look up what I just heard just to get a little more information about it. So, fairly often, but usually spring or fall when we're really putting hours in. When you're like on social media or any digital ad, uh, website for anything, you keep saying like what ads you would click on. Are they more that, hey, this could pr like produce better yield or whatever it is, or is it more like an emotional ad that you would end up clicking on? A little bit of both. Um, a lot of times like new products come in the market that I haven't heard of yet or know enough about to, to really be knowledgeable on it. I'll, I'll click on those just to try and learn more about it, see what it does. Um, but yeah, then the, the emotion kicks into it as well, you know, stuff that says, oh yeah, you're going to get five bushel better beans by putting this product on. So I'll read about it and see how it actually works, if it's going to work for our type of environment, just because there's there's so many different types of environments that we farm in nowadays. Yeah, it might work really well in one part of the world, but doesn't do anything for where we're at. So I'll try and learn about it, see what it does that way. I would say that at least 80% of my time, if I click on a, a business site, it's to, to better my business. So that's not as much emotional as it is. I want to see if it's going to make me some money. Mm. If a company serves up an article about gray leaf spot or you know some kind of farming practice, will you click on that in Definitely. social media? Yep, that's kind of what I use social media for anymore. Is just topics like that. What's missing that you want? Regional information. I have argued and argued. You know, in in today's climate, we have to do more and more. So if a seed agronomist. They're always happy to say, we'll come out and scout your fields. But what, what I need is, um, you know, I live in central Missouri. So if they see cutworms coming from the east side of the state, man, that'd be nice for them to start posting that. Yeah, I jump on that because then, you know, it, it makes me wake up and say, I need to watch this field or these fields because we might have a potential problem. Is there something, something that ad companies do from a marketing perspective that if they were here, you'd take them out back and have a word with them? Is there just something that drives you crazy that you wish they did, wouldn't do or that they would stop doing? No, the, the big thing is just being more honest with what they got out there. You know, don't, don't make this thing bigger and better than what it really is. Be up front with us, tell us just how it is. Uh, you know, don't. Don't sugarcoat it, you know, give us the basic facts of what, what, what's there and what it's going to do for us. People say, well, I realize they probably have to sugarcoat it to make it bigger and better to get us to do anything, but that's a surefire way to turn me off to type people be total bullshit because I ain't going to like it. Email or, or radio is kind of where I hear most of my advertising that I actually want to look at. When you do hear a product that you want to 
want to learn more information about. Do you usually remember that product name or do you typically they'll have some sort of website to go to and that kind of thing? What's typically your path after you hear that ad? It's usually the product name that I hear and talk about. Same thing. If I hear product name and, and I don't know exactly what their website might be, I'll Google it. But if it's something that they know they have a, they'll have a page or something, then I'll pull it up directly. Product name, because uh, it's the quickest way to remember that. And then, yeah, with the internet now, you can you can find uh, find all the products instantly. So that's that's what we that's what we all do. How are you getting your information during the winter season? Well, I, my source for radio at home is not there. So I do use uh, internet a lot more. I mean, uh, and I go to Twitter. I am extremely pleased that Brownfield, uh, they put their, all their news stories on there. So it's impressive that I can, I can uh, follow all the lead news stories. But I do a lot more internet. Uh, I do not use uh, read magazines. Uh, I don't even subscribe to them anymore. Newspapers, I don't uh, just don't do it anymore. Uh, internet uh, is a lot faster and a lot uh, easier for me. Yeah, I kind of agree. I, I'm an iPad guy, so I don't. I got a basket in my office full of farm magazines that end up getting thrown in recycling. I just I don't look at them. So if it's not radio, I'm I'm on the internet. If if a radio ad was to say visit blah 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 dot com, do you do that or do you just Google the brand name? Normally, I've just Google the blah blah blah. <laughs> Not the. Yeah, it kind of depends on what it is. Um, if, if they give me the actual website and I can remember what it is at the time and place they give it, I'll go to their website first, check it out, you know, read what they have to say, then Google it further from there just to to learn more about it as well. How is your internet connection? Are you affected by limited access or, or slow internet connection? Well, I'm not AOL, but we're not very far away. It's relatively acceptable for where I live. It's certainly not um, you know, what you'd have here. Most of the time it's okay, and just sometimes it's not fast enough. Uh, we have a DSL where at the end of our line, my house is, and so yeah, my daughter's watching a video or something and someone else is online, it's always stolen, so it's not very good. In fact, at my house, uh, I had to take it out. I just didn't think it was worth the cost. And I just, I've got Verizon phones. I just use a hotspot and I watch television off of it and everything else at home. And, uh, for, you know, the same price I'm paying for my Verizon phone all day long. So yes, uh, internet, affordable, high-speed internet in the rural areas is a problem. Do you watch videos on YouTube? I do, not a whole lot. Um, but if there's something, you know, if I'm working on something, and I'll go and I'll pull that up on YouTube to, okay, what is the best way to do this so I don't um, wreck something? Yeah, that's the only time I use YouTube is to go to my case dealer and kind of do something on a combine or a planner. My wife's car wasn't heating the other day, so I'm looking up how to change a the thermostat in a Chrysler car, and I decided that was over my head. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you name it, it's out there. So if it's of interest, I'm going to go looking for it. What media sources do you use on a daily basis? It's, we established that um, radio and some of you social media. What else do you do? TV, magazines? Um, yeah. You know, you watch the TV with the news. Uh, there's at 12 o'clock. There's an egg. Um, the Patios Farm Babe is on Channel Three. You know, so there's that. And then, yeah, in agriculture, I don't know if every industry is like this. You get inundated with magazines and stuff, so you kind of go through those. Yeah, yeah, the same. Uh, Ag TV in the morning uh, for a half hour, um, the internet, emails, I, I get several e-newsletters that I read first thing in the morning. E-newsletters in the morning are one of the first things I do. Um, 
Facebook, obviously, and we talked a little bit about that. I do a lot on that, get a lot of information from that. We don't get a newspaper. I don't watch much TV. Your graph that you had, I think it was 92% or something, was magazines. Magazine, or yeah. Mine, my wife got on me, get rid of them. They're stacking up by the bed. I, I don't read them anymore because it's Google. And I'll lay there in bed with my tablet. And whatever I heard or thought about during the day, a lot of times I'll uh, type it real quick in my phone just so I can remember it uh, five hours later when I get home. And then I'll spend that evening searching. I subscribe to a lot of uh, uh, groups that send me emails. Let me just go through there and you can either decide to read it or, or delete it. Uh, magazines, uh, I seldom read magazines anymore. Uh, if I do, it's in the bathroom. So you know, it either makes it to it and, and gets thrown away or, or gets thrown away after us as I come out. But uh, very seldom do I read a magazine and very seldom do I read newspapers. If I do, it's, it's online newspapers. Uh, but mostly it's uh, uh, radio or, or the you know, email or, or something I'll look at on, on the internet, like what Robert said. Equipment comes with paper manuals, but a lot of times those get ripped and shredded and you can't read them anyway. And it's just so easy to, to Google the part you're looking for or what you're working on. And there's so many ag discussion websites that will tell you how to fix it or, you know, same problems and show you kind of solutions that other people have come up with. And it's so much easier than actually calling the dealer. You were talking about your Alexa and accessing your radio stations through the internet. Um, how often do you do that? Um, winter is a great resource. Um, but, and are you finding that most of your egg radio stations are available that way? Well, the ones that I want to listen to are. And uh, I do that in the morning when I'm eating my, uh, eating my breakfast, looking at the internet, and listening to the radio. They say men can't multitask. Well, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> But uh, I do, and uh, that's when I do mainly listen to it. I don't listen to it in the evening. I don't listen to it at noon. For one thing, I'm very seldom home for, for lunch at noon. Usually we're doing something, either on grain or something. So then I do have the radio on in the, in the trucks. I mean, we do have the radio on in the trucks. But uh, if it's just a uh, normal winter day, no, I don't. But that's, that's, what I, that's when I listen to it. What would make you be like, yeah, I'll enter my email address to get more information or have a chance at. This might be bad, but I have I have two emails just for that reason. I will use my uh, my spam email, I'll call it, to uh, put into contests or information that I want to know more about, and then keep my normal email uh, less spammed up. None of the above. <sighs> Do you guys find any value in newsletters from businesses that you've either done business with in the past or ones that would like to get your business moving forward? Um, can you guys pay attention to the newsletters they issue, whether we hear monthly? I'm not really a newsletter kind of gal. You know, if I do, I'll skim it. If I get it, I'll skim it real quick, you know? So that's my answer. I would probably lean kind of the same way. The emails, I get a dozen emails every day about junk and it's got to be something I'm kind of interested in from, some, from, from a known source before I will put much faith in it. What information are you most likely to access on, on a mobile device, like on your, on your smartphone? Why and when? Other than social media. Um, weather's a big one. Usually check that in the mornings and late at the evening you know, when I get home. Um, grain markets, I'll check that first thing in the morning, kind of see what overnight trading did. Um, if I need to use a map for something, I'll get on that first thing in the morning. But other times, I'm not necessarily old school in my way of using a phone nowadays, but if it's not a phone call or a text message, it's permanent. I really just don't get on my phone hardly at all anymore, honestly. So I have apps for, you know, the apps for a certain thing, or I'll go to Climate if I want to look at field information or my app center on the John Deere. So a lot of those, I tend to use more app-based products um, now than going to Google or Safari or anything like that. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, very few phone calls, a lot of text messages. I use the national weather, mostly. Um, uh, we do have a couple broker type 
marketing uh, websites that I go through. He mentioned New Ag Talk, which that's the one I'm on 80% of the time, but unfortunately it does no advertising. Yeah, same way here, you know, weather channel, weather underground, stuff like that. Um, email, do a lot of email on my phone versus computer nowadays. Um, grain markets for sure. I have our local co-ops app pinned right to my phone so I can just check it whenever I need to. Um, online banking, that's, that's kind of a big one for us. Yeah, I think I've got three different apps on my phone and iPad for most type things. But you'll listen to the radio and if they talk about rain coming in later today and you haven't looked at that app, then I'll pull it up to do a little more detail. But at least it's good to hear on the radio first. When I hear the radio rain's coming, you look at the app and see when you got a clip spraying or you got a certain things you got to watch out. How much information do you get on your phone in a day versus other places that you get information? From the ethanol plant and, my, and soybean and crusher, Cargill is my local one. So I get those text messages. And other than those two text messages, it'll be the radio that I rely on. I really don't look at markets on my phone that much. If I'm going to look up something, I'll just look it up. I'll Google it on there. Uh, you know, like I say, social media, the texting, phone calls, not so much. Uh, if I want to do something, I've got BC in the office. And you know, if I'm really want to do something important where I can see it better and be better, I'll use that. But I use this probably 80% of the time. Assuming you typically have had uh, poor uh, internet reception, high-speed internet uh, uh, ability in your markets, how has uh, mobile and smartphones, LTE, 4G, how, how has that changed your uh, ability to access the internet and, and do things online that maybe you didn't do 10 years ago? Internet in my area is uh, spotty at best. Uh, we don't have wired internet, it's all broadband or satellite. So usually it's a mobile hotspot and off my phone or just using my phone in general if we need to. Um, but yeah, the same way, if, if I hear something that catches my ear on the radio or, or TV or something like that, I'll just Google it and learn more about it that way. The older generation of farmers are even do more things on their phone than I do, it seems like. And they're, they're showing me stuff that they can do on their phone that it, I didn't pay attention to or know how to do. It's it's uh, rather surprising, but uh, the phone, internet is, is becoming more and more of a, a tool on farm life every day for us. What are your perceptions of social channels? And by that, I mean Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever they might be. What, what do you use? What do you think of them? Just kind of your thoughts on that. Myself, I do not use Twitter. Um, I have Snapchat on my phone, but I don't think I've ever posted anything on it. Facebook, I get on that. It's a great way to keep track of people you know because when you're involved in organizations, you're meeting people from all over the country. It's a great way to keep in touch with them, find out what they're doing. So I don't have a Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, anything like that. I have an email account. And I don't believe that it's as important as everybody thinks it is to be on social media. I'm glad he's doing it. I'm in the minority and I know it, and I'm okay being in the minority because I would rather speak to you all about what we're doing and have a conversation with them face to face instead of anonymously. It's a good way to get to our consumer friends to talk about what's true in agriculture. And that's why I use Facebook and I do use Twitter. I like to talk about what, what really is a true story in agriculture and uh, as, you, as, a, as a farmer. Yeah, I'm on Facebook, we have a personal page, we have a farm page, uh, Twitter, I do a little bit, my guys that work for me seem to dabble in that a little bit more, and we have a farm website as well. So we try to tell our story, try to get it out there and share what we're doing, because there's a lot of people that need an education. So I use Twitter if it's ag stuff, and I use Facebook very rarely, but if I want to communicate something about ag to all the people I know that are really not ag related. I'm not a Twitter reader. I'm not a chat chatter. I use Facebook's all I use. But it's an imperfect platform. Yeah, with all of the 
uh, that's out there. I use Facebook a lot uh, or more frequently. Um, mostly when I'm doing things for you know the, the industry, um, if we had something that came out of the soybean group, uh, I try to pass out or promote it to, to kind of indicate to, hopefully I'm reaching my non-farm friends. We do have two accounts, one for basically my, fa my family's got one. Then we also want run one under our uh, cattle side of it. I've got all your standard social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, I'll skim it in the mornings. It's it's getting to be more of a, a hassle for me just because there's so much stuff you have to weed out of instant or uh, you know, social media nowadays. Social media is not a huge platform that I tend to use anymore. It's just kind of a if it's needed. I started Twitter a few years ago, and that lasted about six months, maybe. I couldn't stand it, uh, but I am on Facebook, and um, my wife's sitting back there saying, "You know, we're at dinner." Put the Facebook up, you know. So I have a tendency to scan that maybe a little more often than I need to at times. But I'm on a couple farm discussion pages, though, just as much. How open are you to new media forms like streaming TV and, and podcasts? The streaming side of things, I'm not really into just because it won't work in my house, podcasts, depending on who it is, I tend to sometimes listen to them, but not usually just because they you know, get such a wide range of things they talk about and they kind of just drag on half the time. It's uh, not my forte of what I want to listen to. I've never really gotten into watching podcasts. I'll read a blog here and there, uh, but that's about it. We have broadband internet at our place, sporadic. Most of the time it works okay so we can stream some movies. And don't do podcasts, I'd rather listen to the radio. Some companies, uh, some uh, cooperatives are offering now podcasts either on their website or through their, through their apps. What is your appetite for listening to a program like that produced by a company, a news site, or a brand? I, uh, I'm not a big lover of podcasts. Um, I just, just am not. Maybe if I really got into them, I maybe would, but just don't uh, take the time, probably, and, and do them. I just use my other, other means to find information on them.